the exciting thing about the games is that it, it transforms itself almost on a daily basis. You know, technology advances the experience and the opportunities and also creates problems like no other entertainment industry. But the starting point has to be a great game. You haven't got a great game, don't even bother. The controllers of console games are quite intimidating. You've got 15 buttons, so it requires a certain amount of knowledge. So while there's a large niche audience playing uh, console games, it was never really mass market entertainment. I mean, Apple really nailed the user interface with swipe technology, suddenly enabling people who had never thought about playing games to be able to play games, games like Angry Birds and Words with Friends and Fruit Ninja and Temple Run and Clash of Clans. These are very engaging games. And more recently, you know, Candy Crush Saga, just millions upon millions more people are playing games and suddenly realizing, hey, these aren't so bad after all. This is not such a, a dark art after all. It's actually quite good fun and engaging. I mean, the social aspects of it, whether it's online versus with friends you know or people who don't even know, to have some chat and community, I think, is, is a wonderful thing. And so the whole games world is being demystified as more and more people are playing on smartphones and tablets. The games industry has moved from a, a premium pricing point to a freemium pricing point. It used to be physical goods sold at retail for a fixed price, you know, 40, 50 pounds or the dollar, euro equivalent. And that was inflexible, but today, uh, online and more recently on tablet, they've moved from a subscription-based model to a freemium model, whereby it's free at the point of delivery. And during the game, you were given opportunities to be upsold uh, through microtransactions content. A game has to be amazing if it's free, because no one's gonna spend any money inside that game unless they're having a great time. If you give them a rubbish game and it's free, they're not gonna buy anything. So if you're having a good time, you're more likely to spend money. Now, of all the millions of people playing, only between 1% and 5% and of people actually spend money inside these games. But the number is so big that the revenues from that small percentage of people generates you know, huge amounts of, of, of revenue for the successful titles. Because let's not forget, for every Angry Birds, there's probably 20,000 dead birds out there on the App Store. Physical board games, which you see around you here, uh, are still played, but clearly a lot of those games are being ported onto digital devices, plus purely digital games are being created you know, by the hundreds of thousands these days. And just the way we are in the world, whether it's ebooks, uh, music, physical components are, are, are disappearing. And that, in, in a way, is a, a wonderful opportunity because content creators, no matter where in the world, can reach global audiences via high speed broadband the traditional gatekeepers are no longer blocking the way and you're not having to put loads of money up front to create uh, products. You know, in the old world, you have to, for games for example, you have to spend an awful lot of money on development and then you have to make physical media, put them on trucks, put them in shops, uh, get returns, build inventory. This is quite a, a laborious and very costly process and some of the people who stood in the way of you reaching your audience often didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Uh, but now you can reach global audiences directly. And with the democratization of raising funding through Kickstarter or other crowdfunding ventures, you can find out whether or not your idea is viable before you've had to start the project and you can find it's your own audience. So this is brilliant. It's allowing new ways of creativity to reach an audience, new ways of playing, and, and gets people who are often not wanted out of the way. It's almost like the second golden age of games is happening. It's small teams, uh, bootstrapping, sometimes working at home, doing it for nothing with friends, are able to get content up there. And they learn through that, it's getting, what they say, getting water through the pipes to, to learn the business. And when they've had a few apps out there, they might not have monetized much, but they've learned a lot, especially about the back end and about virality and, and, and discovery. That's the big challenge. How am I gonna get my game known about? Uh, it, it often comes back to old fashioned marketing, buying installs and leveraging the paid for installs with free installs once you get your chart position. But it's it's learning the, the whole you know the whole PR, 
uh, social media uh, reviewers, like the old world, uh, of getting your product known. It's funny with the games industry because, like any, any industry, you have to be, know what you're good at and know what you're bad at. Now, a lot of creative people who start off games companies, you know, they're brilliant at making games, but they're not often brilliant at making uh, running companies. So to build real value in a company, you have to create your intellectual property, try and retain ownership of it, and scale your business. Now, <laughs> it reaches a point when you realize that you can't do everything. So you need to partner with a business person, which often happens, and sometimes successfully, sometimes not. The reason why it doesn't happen is that suddenly, the business people you employ suddenly think they, they know a lot about games <laughs> and they start making decisions and they tend to want to make games from yesteryear or on tomorrow. So the creators and the business should absolutely work in tandem together, both knowing their own areas, neither of them taking control. Because you know, the business people suddenly have an opinion about games. As a creative people, they don't suddenly have an opinion about what you know, spreadsheets that they're going to use or, or, <laughs> or what accounting packages they're going to use. But everyone seems to have an opinion on product, and that's often where it goes wrong. It's not just the pricing points moving from a premium to a freemium pricing point. Games are moving from a box product to a digital service. And at that point now, a game is forever in beta. And through analytics and metrics, you find out what bits of a game consumers like and what bits of the game they don't like. So of course, because it is a service, you're going to give them more of what they like and less of what they don't like. And during that course, by forever improving your game, it gives you more opportunities, of course, to, to monetize your consumers.